right, so let's get on with it. Implementing a queue using stacks. Uh, but before we get into the actual implementation details, uh, let's refresh our concepts about queue and stacks. Uh, queue data structure is what is known as an ADT or an abstract data type. Uh, it has two important methods. Uh, first is the NQ method, which is used to uh, put elements into the queue. And then we have the DQ uh, method, which is used to extract elements from the queue. Uh, by its nature, a queue is a, a FIFO data structure, first in, first out. So the first element to get into the queue will be the first to be uh, moving out of the queue. And that is what defines a queue in real life as well, if you have noticed. Stacks, on the other hand, are quite different. Uh, stacks have, again, two methods. Uh, one is push which is to push elements into the stack. If you see on the left hand side, uh, we have a stack uh, which is uh, getting a request to push element five, uh, and then that element is inserted on the top of the stack. The second method is the pop method, which is used to return the topmost element from the stack. So if a pop uh, request is issued on, on the example stack, we will remove the element five and return it. So as you can see by its nature, uh, stack is a, a LIFO data structure. So last element to get in will be the first one to get out. And this is where the contradiction starts uh, when we talk about implementing a queue using stacks uh, because both of these data structures are uh, pretty different from each other in this regard. Uh, so we will we'll look at the implementation in the uh, next section. All right, so implementation time. The biggest clue that we can receive uh, while solving this problem is right there in the problem statement. So let's read it once again. Implementing a queue using stacks. The key word to note over here is stacks, which means that we can use multiple stacks to solve our problem. And I'll just name a couple of stacks right now, the push stack and the pop stack. I'll come to how we are going to use them. Uh, now to build our queue data structure, basically what we'll be implementing is an NQ method. Uh, which is to insert uh, elements into the queue. And then we will have a DQ method, which is meant for uh, for extracting elements from the queue. Underneath our queue uh, will be using two stacks, the push stack and the pop stack, but the consumer of our queue need not worry about uh, the underlying data structure. All they will be aware of is the NQ and the DQ uh, methods. Now suppose uh, for our data structure, new data structure, we are going to receive an NQ request. Uh, with the element one and what we can do is just put that onto the push stack. We receive another request. We just simply put that uh, element on the stack. Uh, third request, we push that element as well. Uh, fourth request with element four, we push that also. And lastly, we receive the fifth request and we successfully push that element on to the top of the stack. Uh, so far, so good. Now imagine at this point, the consumer decided that they want to DQ from our queue data structure. And when, when we mean uh, by DQ, what they are expecting is the first element that they inserted into our queue, which is the element one. However, as you can not notice, we have no way of accessing this element directly. We can access this element only after we pop all the elements above this element, that is elements five, four, three, and two. But if we pop those elements, we are going to lose those elements and subsequent DQ requests will be in trouble. So how we go? How do we go about uh, solving this situation for us? Well, here we can use the pop stack, the second stack in our queue implementation. What we can do is we can move all of these elements to the pop stack. So basically we pop the elements from the push stack and push those elements onto the pop stack like so. We move the element five to the pop stack, then four, then three, then two. And lastly, we move the element one, which we can now very easily DQ uh, from the pop stack and return it to the consumer like so. Now, if you notice at this point, the rest of the elements in our pop stack are all in the correct order. Uh, that is the order in which they were inserted into the queue. That is two, three, four, and five. So any subsequent DQ requests, we can very easily return the topmost element. We can pop the topmost element from the pop stack and return it as output like so. Now imagine at this point, we receive another NQ request. Now we need not touch uh, the pop stack at all at this point. 
what we can simply do is we put the new element or push the new element to the push stack like so we receive another enquiry request we simply push that element as well onto the uh, onto the push stack simple uh, now if we receive the dq request as i already said we already know that the elements in our pop stack are in the correct order right uh, so we can simply uh, use the pop method on our pop stack to return the topmost element and, and return it as part of the uh, dq uh, dq interface call we receive another dq request we simply return the topmost element another dq request we simply return the element 5 from the pop stack now at this point our pop stack is empty and imagine we received another dq request so at this point we need to check yes our pop stack is empty so which means any chance of any element being in our overall queue implementation will be in the push stack however the property of the push stack is such that the element in the uh, push stack will not be in the correct order so as with last time we have to first move those elements to the pop stack so we move the element 7 then we move the element 6 and now we can very easily dequeue the element 6 which is basically in the correct order in which it was inserted into the queue so we dequeue the element 6 we receive another dequeue request and we can then simply uh, return the last element that is element 7 from the pop stack and and that's it so basically we solved a complex looking problem using two stacks and don't worry about the code the entire code for this uh, particular problem is uh, is there in in a link in a github link uh, in the comment section below so you can easily uh, uh, easily look at the code but the important thing to consider or understand here is the fundamental uh, operations that we used to solve this problem and how we visualized it using two stacks if if we get above the mental initial mental block while solving this problem it becomes relatively easy uh, the code you can write in any language uh, the link uh, contains the code in javascript uh, you could do the same thing in java or any other uh, programming language of your choice but the important thing is to understand how we use these two stacks to eventually emulate a queue data structure hope you liked this post uh, i will recommend or request all of you people to please uh, subscribe to uh, progressive coder and we'll continue uh, posting many other such problems in the future so have a nice day everyone see you later